y'all, it's your girl, and I'm back for another video. I just want to come and do this quick video with you guys to kind of go over my process and how I moved out of state and the tips and tricks or whatever my suggestions for the next person. Ever since we made this move out of state, I've had people DM me almost every day asking me how I did it, how I went about it, what's the best side of town, um, just basically the ins and outs on how to move out of state. There's a lot of people that want to move not only to Las Vegas, but to other states around the country and people are blowing your girl up, okay? They, they're just blowing your girl up. So I thought I would take the time to write out a list in my handy dandy notebook of um, like my, what I did. So if you're interested in learning more about my experience, be sure to stay tuned. First things first, get yourself a notebook, okay? Like I don't understand how people plan out things mentally and not write them down. You have got to write your stuff down. Not only for the fact of keeping track of stuff, but you need to write it into existence. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel. That's how I, 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 I mentally break things down. If there's something that I want or I want to do, I write it down. You need, you need a book. I have several, several notebooks. You guys who've been rocking with me for a long time know I'm a notebook fanatic. I love them. I just have a whole bunch of them. Um, this is just my notebook where I like to jot down ideas and things like that. But I also have, I also have a large planner that I use for my everyday life, which I will go more in detail about this planner later. A notebook and a planner will save your life, especially in a move. The first thing that you need to do when this, when moving out of state is, if you don't already know where you wanna go, decide where you wanna go. So if you, don't necessarily know where you want to move or if you're just like I don't know where the hell I gotta go but I just got I just don't I gotta get the hell out of here I would just start with the things that matter most to you you know what I'm saying like do you care if it snows there do you care if it rains do you care if they have bad weather do you care you know geographically you know what it is how far it is from your home state things like that I would start with that to see exactly where you might want to end up once you have found the state that you want to move to Say like, say for instance, it's Las Vegas. Since I'm here and this is where I moved to, we'll use this as an example. Say it's Nevada. Once you've figured out that this is where you wanna go, your next step is to of course figure out what part of town you wanna move on. The biggest mistake you can make when moving states is searching for a house before you know what side of town is good and bad. Um, but I did wanna make sure that my kids were not in the hood because I ain't never lived in a hood and I ain't gonna start moving to somebody's hood. But you could accidentally move into a hood and not even know it, you know what I'm saying? So definitely do research on the neighborhoods. Get into, what I did was I added myself into a Facebook moms group. Usually every city in a state, every major city has a moms group of moms who live in that city, of course, okay? And with that, you just, ask you know you just add yourself to that group and let them know hey i'm moving to this city or i'm considering moving to this city please let me know what size of town are really good with good schools are really bad and i should stay away from and nine times out of ten you're going to get a few people who are going to be like okay let me help you out and show you where you need to be and where you don't need to be and there's going to be a few people that's like uh i hate it here don't move here i don't like it here don't come here i'm trying to get out of here at least that's what i experienced and it kind of scared me it put me back pushed me back a little bit and i was like oh my gosh i don't know is this where i want to be because people are like they seem like they hated it there was people it was either one end of the spectrum or another it was either they really really loved it here or they really really hated it here and I'm like oh my god and when you're moving somewhere new and unfamiliar it's like the last thing you want to hear is negativity even though you may need to hear a little bit of it and take it with a grain of salt but just you know it's hard because it makes you scared and it's like okay never mind I don't want to do this it's easier to stay here where I'm familiar and I know people and I know where not to go and I know where to go it's it's easier to stay here than it is to just get up and go to some place and I, now I'm scared because I don't know I don't know what the hell is going on out there just try not to let that discourage you you know what I mean people no matter where you move there's gonna be somebody who fucking hates it there period 
So you just got to take that with a grain of salt and just say, okay, I'll take that into um, account, but what side is good and what side is bad? Let's get down to the nitty gritty so I know. I would also say that if you could take a trip to where you're planning to move. So if you're planning to move, and I don't mean like a vacation trip, because a vacation trip is different than a moving, I'm, I wanna move here, I'm doing research on living here trip. Definitely, definitely, definitely take a trip to where you're going. Um, and like I said, don't stay by, like if you're coming to Vegas, don't stay on the strip trying to figure out if you wanna live here or not, okay? That's not what you need to be doing because the strip is a completely different lifestyle than what you're actually gonna be living here, okay? Or do your research in person, look for houses in person, look at schools in person, look and see, then feel, get a feel for the area for yourself. A lot more beneficial to look at it in person than try to do all of this over the computer and over the phone. Trust your girl from experience, it's hard, okay? Personally, me, I was, I'm blessed, okay? God had me, and that's how I knew the move was for me and my family and we were supposed to be here because I had started looking online and I just happened to come across um, this house and it just worked out. This is the biggest question that I get all the time where did I find this nice ass house I found this house on Craigslist I said that before it's not a secret it's damn sure nothing to be like ashamed of I recently had someone try to tell me that like shopping on Craigslist is bad or like it means that you don't have good credit it means that you're like poor or something like that and I, I just don't understand where that stigma comes from because Craigslist is just a vessel to hold all of the properties that are out here. It's just as good as Zillow. It's just as good as, you know, realtor.com or any of those, or apartmentfinder.com, any of those other websites that you might go on to look for a house or an apartment. It's just as good as those. It's just as, it's just as good as all of those and just as reputable as all of them, okay? Um, so, I found my house on Craigslist. What I did was, I was actually not only looking on Craigslist, I looked on uh, Craigslist, I looked on Facebook in their marketplace section because it's really booming now. You can find a lot of good stuff on there. Um, I also looked on Zillow and I looked on, there was another one that I looked on. I can't remember, but if I remember, I'll put it down here below. But um, I just did a search for houses okay in the size house that I wanted which was a four bedroom plus and um, the price range that I wanted which was definitely under three thousand dollars a month that's another thing you really need to pinpoint your budget and what you can realistically afford I knew that my budget was gonna give me a lot of space in other areas whereas in Colorado it really hindered me I was really really struggling to find a house big enough in our price range. Like I said guys, I'm not rich, I don't have a million dollars, and I just couldn't comfortably afford 3,000 plus a month for a house in Colorado just to have enough space for me and my kids and my family. And most middle class Americans cannot. Is it something to be embarrassed about? Absolutely not. It's just life, you know? And if you don't know what you can afford, get online. When me and my husband discussed what cities we might wanna to move to, I wrote them down. The first thing I did research on before schools, before doctors, before neighborhoods, before anything was the housing market. How is it? What can I get there? If I want a four bedroom house, how much do I have to spend for that? Because that's where we need to be to live comfortably. Like I said, amongst other things, that played a big part into our move. Where can we go for cheap? or not cheap, but where can we go for a lot less than what we're paying now, less than half, you know what I mean? Um, so that helped play into our decision to move here as well. So definitely get online and see what you feel like you can afford. If you're not sure what your budget is, get online and see what you can get for a two bedroom, what you can get for a three bedroom from these different cities that you think that you might wanna move into. Another thing that I wanna say real quick is that for some reason, some people tend to think that if you find a house off of Craigslist or an apartment off of Craigslist that they don't run credit checks. So you're allowed to just um, have completely shysty, shady ass history, rental history or completely shysty, shady ass credit and get a place still. That is absolutely the most ridiculous 
thing I've ever fucking heard. You have got to have some something. Now, are they gonna be as strict as an apartment complex or a rental company? No, if you work with a private owner and you have credit issues, then you have the ability to, to talk to them and say, hey, you know, I know my credit is not 100%, but I'm working on it, or this is why this has happened, or this is why that has happened. They are people just like me and you, and they're gonna be more understanding, whereas a rental company is corporately owned and they have policies that they have to abide by and it's kind of like hey if your credit's not here or if you have this and this and that on your credit we just cannot approve you it's just something we cannot do like i said when you're working one-on-one -on -one with the owner and they meet you and they get to know you then they have they're more willing to be like okay i'm gonna give this person a second chance if you need a second chance you see what i'm saying i know most of you don't but for the ones who do who see that i got my house off of craigslist and think oh well she just got that house off of craigslist and she didn't need any no you absolutely have to get your credit run nine times out of ten they do run your credit you will pay an application fee you will need to have a job or proof of income so don't think this is just like a go get a free house and this is no work put into it or you don't have to have any type of anything because that's just i mean that's unrealistic boo so talking to landlords when you're out of state is tricky okay because they're especially when you're speaking to somebody who owns the house it is really hard because it's hard to not sound like a scam artist there's a lot of scams on the internet in general not just craigslist so when you're talking to someone it's hard to sound like you're not wasting their time or sound like you're not like trying to scam them in some way. It's hard to do business with people who say I'm not in the same state as you. If you get past this, that first initial conversation or the first text or message as you leave, then it gets a little easier after that, okay? Now you will get some no's. Don't think that you're gonna just hop in, hop on the hop on the phone or hop on the text or hop on the email and just start reaching out to people and people are gonna be like, hey, yeah, come bring my place. Um, all I gotta do is send you an application and it's yours. That's not what they're gonna say. It's gonna be more difficult than that because like I said, you don't, you're not in that state. When you find a house on Craigslist or wherever you attend to apply from if it's craigslist specifically you're going to either have to call or text i prefer to text i'm a texter i will text you all day and night i'm usually too busy to call i will call if i have to or if that's their preferred if that's their preferred way of communicating then i will definitely call because you want to be professional um but i i love to text so it's quick for me to just send out my little thing, copy and paste it, especially if I'm trying to reach out to a lot of different people. Um, they just try to sit and have phone calls or or text or, or to leave messages for everyone because then I have a record of who it is that I'm, I'm talking to and things like that. Hi, my name is blank. My name is Chrissy. Um, I'm relocating and I don't say I'm thinking of relocating I say I'm relocating people are not gonna want to waste their time with people who think they might want to live there do you want to live here or not like what are you what are you looking for houses for if you're not sure you see what I'm saying don't waste my time time is money that's how I think so I know that's how they think because landlords are all about that money I would say hi my name is Chrissy I am relocating to your city in whatever month this might be. Another tip is don't start reaching out to people until you are sure that you're moving out there and that you have a time frame on when you're gonna go out there. It's hard to say this, I mean a lot of times um, private owners don't wanna deal with you, especially like realtors and um, renting companies. They don't want to talk to you unless you are either out there currently or you are coming out within a week or two. It's just really the luck of the draw when it comes to getting someone who's willing to work with you if you have a longer time frame in place. 30 days for sure, don't start, I, I mean, you start looking before 30 days, don't wait till the last 30 days to start looking for a house seriously, but start browsing before 30 days, but on 30 days, you know, really hit the ground and start looking because it's harder than it looks okay I know your girl made it look easy but it really was not easy so yeah so just say hi my name is Chrissy I am moving to your state on this date next month I am looking for a house 
with in a good neighborhood for me and my children. I think this house is suitable. I always add it in there too, that I'm looking to get something locked in before we get out there. So that they know that you're not here to play games. You know what I'm saying? You're not here to just be like, oh, I'm browsing around. I don't know if I'm gonna really. So they know that you're ready, you're ready to apply now if need be and you're ready to lock something in. And by lock something in, I mean just get approved. Cause don't pay anybody. Like don't, don't send your money girl. Like don't do that, okay? A lot of the times guys, they will come back and say, hey, um, call me a week before you get in. I have other properties that you might be interested in. These properties are going too fast for me to hold it. We're not gonna hold anything for 30 days or whatever. Um, or they might, you know, they might say something like that or they might say, go ahead and apply. Long story short, okay? Just reach out to them around 30 days before you're ready to come out for sure, for sure, okay? Be prepared, like be prepared that if you get approved for something that you apply for, be prepared to like fly out and lock that shit in because that's what it's gonna take. Um, people do not wanna hold shit for free. They're gonna want that money and I would not personally feel comfortable going to drop it in their bank account or Western Unioning somebody something because when you do it like that, you have no guarantee of who you're talking to or who you're dealing with, and you could so, so easily get scammed. I know a few people who have. Plus, it's hard when, you, when you're when you looking at a house that's sight unseen. You can look at pictures that somebody pulled from another ad or from something off some public record offline, and you could be sending your money to somebody who doesn't even own this house, who doesn't even have anything to do with this house, who's just a scam artist. That being said, be prepared to take a flight if you need to, to go out there and meet that per meet that owner in person or the company in person, look at the house in person and sign whatever paperwork you need to sign or whatever, okay? So just prepare for that. Make sure you have your deposit and your first month's rent already saved up and lined up ready to go. Sometimes you might, if you have um, not as good credit and you're working with a private owner and they're like, eh, I'm not sure, you're not out here, I don't wanna hold the house, I don't wanna do this, I don't wanna do that. Just say, hey, you know, I have the deposit that you're asking for, I have the first month's rent, and I have the next month's rent too, because I know that you are kind of taking a gamble on me or whatever. Um, I'm working on my credit, my credit is, it's not there yet, y'all, it's not where I wanna be. Just became a part of the 600 Club not that long ago. I'm, I'm, I'm making my way, making my way there, but I'm not there yet. Works really hard on my credit, so I don't have to do a lot of that anymore, but there was a time when Cadence and Kingston were small when my credit was effed up because I had no, no, no history but bad history on my credit. And it was really hard to try to get places and stuff like that. So I had to do a lot of that. Hey, I got two months of rent plus a deposit. And then people were like, okay. Okay, I, I'll, I'll work with you. You know, when you flash that money in front of their face, sometimes that's all it takes. So just be prepared for that, okay? It's really, really important. Pay in person. Get a money order. Don't pay in cash. Cash has no trail. Get a money order or a check, okay? So a lot. Some people don't like checks. That's fine, whatever. Get a money order. Rip off your receipt. Keep it. I've had money orders stolen out of my purse before, and when that happened to me, I filed a police report, and because I had my receipt, they were able to track that money order and find out exactly where that person cashed it and exactly who it was, because you have to show your ID when you cash things like that, and so they were able to track that person like that. So, just be aware, guys. You, Money orders are really good. I've, like I said, I've had them stolen from me before and cashed from for somebody completely different, and I was able to get my money back. So, and also one one quick little trick: when you get your money orders, write who it's for on there, and sign it. Rip away the receipt that it comes with and put that somewhere else, and you put your money order, and then like go straight home or go straight to wherever you're gonna pay and do it right then and there. Okay, just. Speaking from experience, girl, okay? Speaking from experience. So now you have found out where you wanna be. You've done your research on the neighborhoods. You've taken a trip if you can, or if you've never been there before, to check out the neighborhood. You know what side of town you're gonna be on. You've started looking for a house. You have found a house. You've locked it in. Now you're back at home with a week or two left before this move and you're like, what the hell do I do? Where do I go from here? The biggest things before I moved was how we were gonna transport the cars and how we were gonna transport the furniture. In order to save on money, we decided to have my husband drive a moving truck so that we 
would have to pay half of what it would cost to have our furniture shipped. Having your furniture shipped is the easy way to do it. If you don't have a lot of things or any furniture and you can just put your stuff in boxes, you can literally go to FedEx and ship all your stuff to your new address, okay? So it won't even take that much effort or money that way. But for us, we had furniture and things like that. So we had no choice but either to like rent a pod, which is extremely expensive. It was like a thousand to two thousand dollars. Not a thousand, it was like two thousand dollars for the size pods we would have needed to get our stuff shipped out here. And then it takes up to 10 to 15 days to get your stuff once you get here. So there's no telling how long we would have been at without furniture. Our way costed about $1,000. We rented a truck, we had to pay gas to get it, to put in the truck, of course, the whole way here. So it was kind of expensive. There's no easy, easy way. I do know a lot of people who sell all their furniture and just take the, like I said, all their clothes and things that can fit in boxes and ship that stuff and then just buy new stuff when they get there. That might be like the easiest way to do it is to like, get rid of all of the furniture that you have and just get brand new stuff if you can afford that. But I literally just bought like a majority of this stuff. Like the, the kids' beds are were like only a year old. They're actually, yeah, they're only a year old. My bed was only a few months old. Our table down, like our, my couches and my tables and stuff, they were all like very new. So I was not about to sell that stuff, yo. I was just, you could not pay me to sell that, okay? I was like, no, I'm gonna get my money's worth out of all this. And the triple bunks, I was not gonna sell those because that those were really hard to come by, okay? The last thing I did before moving out of state was I got everything done that I need to get done that I don't, so that I don't have to worry about anything for the first 30 days while here, okay? Um, all the kids' physicals are done, all of their teeth are done, all of their visions are done. So I don't have to worry about that right now. I can. You know they're they're good for a while on all that unless somebody gets sick god forbid but unless someone gets sick we don't have to be at the doctor or eye clinic or ear or nothing nothing of that nature the only thing i did not figure out and have not figured out were the school so i would suggest try to have their school figured out or at least picked out at least a couple of them um it's like i said it's that's another thing that's hard to figure out when you're not in the state because you want to go you want to tour the school you want to talk to the principal you want to see the teachers you want to see where they're going to be learning you don't want to just pick a school and then you're like oh i don't even like this okay there are a couple of things that i do have to tie up out there but i'm probably going to end up having to go back out there anyway to finish up some things but that is okay that's basically it guys that's how i did it that's how that's how we got out here that's how we that's how we made it happen that's basically everything i can think of here is my words of encouragement for all of you lovely ladies and gentlemen um who are watching this and who just need this little bit of encouragement when i was down and i was like i'm not sure i'm scared i'm nervous like what what i don't know like i know i need to make this move i know i need to make this move i want better i want a better life for me i want a better life for my kids for the whole entire family i want to have more they deserve more i want to be in a new place with a new start and just you know all these different things and then you get this feedback from people who are like no you can't do that no you shouldn't do that you don't know anybody there you're not gonna have anybody you know all that gets into your head and you're like oh my god maybe i shouldn't do this but i really need to do this and i just don't even know what to do just stop and remember this. If you're waiting for perfection in your life before you make that move that you really feel like you need to do, you will never move. You see what I'm saying? And that's for anything in life. If you wait for life to be perfect and all your ducks to be in a row before you're able to just like make a move or do what you need to do in life, you are never gonna be able to do anything or go anywhere because Life is not perfect, and let's be honest, y'all, we we all know if it ain't one thing, it's what? It's another. My other mission in life besides showing people my life on YouTube is to motivate women. This, this world was built off of our backs, okay? For some reason, we have been bred to think that we can't be or do or have, and that is unacceptable, sis. You can be, you can do, you can have. It's out there for you. You're gonna have to go and take it because no one's gonna give it to you, okay? So if you want it, you better get up and you better go get it. And you better go get it now. All right, y'all. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I'll see you guys next vlog. Bye.